Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 30 of free AWS DevOps Zero to Hero series. And in this video, we will deep dive into the concept of three tier architecture model on AWS. Now I feel very sad to say that we have reached to the last episode of this wonderful playlist. Of course, I feel happy at the same time that I was able to finish all the things that I've committed early, like this is a GitHub repository that we have created during the start of this course. And I said that I'm going to cover each and every important aspect for a AWS DevOps engineer, right from what is AWS, what is public cloud, to learning about IAM, EC2, VPC, and all the services which are most commonly used by DevOps engineers in the AWS space. And it helped a lot of our learners. I keep posting on the community tab and on the Telegram channel, the success stories of people who have followed the DevOps course and this AWS course. So mixed feelings. One is I feel sad that this course has come to an end. And the second thing is I feel happy that I was able to deliver all the things that I have committed. And additionally, this course is even more special to me because it not only helped our learners, but it has also helped our channel to grow at a significant pace. When we started this AWS course, I remember that the channel was at 40,000 subscribers and today we are at 85K subscribers. So thank you so much for showing a lot of love on this playlist and on the channel. I just want to tell you before I start with this video that this is the final episode of the playlist. But this is not the final episode of the AWS videos that we are going to do on this channel. In future, I'm going to explain you even complicated AWS scenarios. I'm going to do a lot of real time scenario videos on AWS troubleshooting. I'll help you with the interview preparation for AWS DevOps job roles. But because we have to complete this series with the things that are required for a beginner, to start with AWS and to secure a job in AWS. So we will stop this series, but not the AWS videos on our channel. Now let's get started with today's topic. That is three tier architecture on AWS. This is very important. At the same time, I'm going to share you some pros and cons of this three tier architecture. Like what are the advantages of learning this three tier architecture model on AWS. And when you should not say the interviewer that you have implemented this three tier architecture model also. Feeling surprised and confused? Don't worry. Please watch this video till the end so that you understand what exactly I'm talking about. When you should explain the interviewer that you have implemented the three tier architecture model and when it is better to not talk about this three tier architecture model during your interviews. So please watch it till the end and share it with someone who wants to learn AWS and the three tier architecture model. Let's start with understanding what exactly is a three tier architecture model. In general, most of the applications that we interact with on a day to day basis are designed in the three tier architecture model. Let's take example of amazon.com. Let's say that there is a user, okay? And this user wants to get details of a product that is available in amazon.com, okay? Now, what does this user do? User would open his or her favorite browser and search for amazon.com. Now, the browser will show a HTML page or a web page, or in general, we call it as user interface. You can also call it as front end. So when user search for amazon.com on his or her favorite browser, so user would see a user interface where user would be requested for login. Let's say user logs in and user is authenticated. Then user can search for the product and click on the product description page. Now, once the user clicks on the product description page, UI does not have the information of the product. Where is the information of the product stored? Usually such information is stored in a database. 
so there is something called as a backend where you write your backend application in programming languages like java or python or go language where the request from the front end is sent to backend and backend takes the request process the request and sends the request to a database so backend authenticates or creates an authenticated request to a database and database has the information of this product all the information that is required by the user now database sends the response back to the backend and backend will display this response to the user on the user interface so there are three parts here right one is front end one is back end and one is database tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 for example so any application that has a front end plus back end plus database such applications are called as a three tier applications or that applications are designed in the three tier architecture model no for some applications database might not be required let's say i am writing a simple calculator okay and uh, i am hosting this simple calculator on one of the websites so what i need i just need a front end where user can uh, provide what his requirement is so user can say what is 2 plus 2 and from front end i can send the request to the back end where in java i'll try to calculate what is 2 plus 2 and i'll send response back to the front end so in this case database is not required such applications are called as two tier applications okay so i hope now you understood what exactly is a two tier architecture model and what exactly is a three tier architecture model in this series on day 24 when we learned about eks i hope the uh, day number is correct if not you can basically go to the playlist and search for the eks video so in the eks video i have deployed a 2048 game application and that is basically a two tier architecture model in that application there is no database right so i have shown you how to deploy a two tier architecture in aws on the managed kubernetes platform whereas in today's video we will take a look at the three tier architecture model so we have seen tier 1 or one tier application on day 7 we have seen two tier when we try to understand about eks and today we will be looking at the three tier application and how the aws components or what should be the architecture that is required to design for a three tier architecture now if in your interview interviewer is asking this question you can simply follow this video and you can explain the same thing that i am going to explain and your interviewer will be satisfied that you have worked on a three tier architecture application so first we will start with creating a virtual private cloud why you need a virtual private cloud because in your organization there can be other projects as well so there will be a single aws account i mean you can have multiple aws accounts as well but just giving an example in one aws account there can be multiple projects so to keep your project secure from the other projects better to keep a defined virtual private cloud so you can create this virtual private cloud with cidr block range let's say 172.16.0.0/16 okay and depending upon your application so in our case our application is a three tier application there is front end there is back end and then there is a database so what i can do is i will split this virtual private cloud into three vpcs sorry into three subnets so private subnet 1 private subnet 2 and private subnet 3 don't worry if the diagram is not clear i'll show you a better diagram and i'll show you the entire blog written by one of our community members you can use that blog and you can deploy this entire architecture that i'm going to explain you so don't worry about that so this will be your private subnet for front end applications this will be your private subnet for back end applications and then there will be a database subnet okay so in the database subnet what you will do is you will use any managed aws offerings such as rds okay using rds you can create mysql or any other instances on aws 
and in private subnet front end what you will do is you will use an auto scaling group and using auto scaling group you will create applications in ec2 instances the reason for using auto scaling groups is auto scaling group can create your application in different ec2 instances it can scale up scale down and put these instances in different availability zones as well if you feel that i am talking too technical we have already covered about all of these concepts in the previous classes so that's why you might feel that i am using some technical concepts so please follow the previous videos now what does this auto scaling group do so it deploys your application in two different availability zones if i just need two instances okay so this can be your us east 1a for example and this can be your us east 1b and similarly there will be an auto scaling group for your back end instances and you will create a primary rds and a secondary rds the reason is that if something happens to this database all your information should not be lost so there has to be a secondary rds so you create one rdc instance and a secondary rdc instance for backup purposes now whenever a user tries to send a request okay so user's request would ideally go to route 53 as we discussed about route 53 in the previous classes from the route 53 if we are using any content delivery network or if you are using any cdn request would go to the cdn from the cdn there will be a elb in general there will be a application load balancer or you can consider any elastic load balancer is available in a public subnet so this will be your public subnet and from the elastic load balancer the request would go to one of these ec2 instances from here let's say request went to this ec2 instance then this ec2 instance would again coordinate with an application load balancer from the application load balancer request will go to one of the ec2 instances from there request would go to an primary rds okay so request will go to primary rds and from there response will come back to this back end response will come back to front end and user will see whatever he has requested for i know you might be finding this diagram that i have drawn very complicated so for that purpose what i have done is i am here with a complete blog right i'll put the link here in the description as well here you go this is the blog from ankit you can find this entire thing in the description section as well where you will understand right from step 1 so this is what i have explained from user request would go to the web server then it would go to the app server and it would go to the database so the clear diagram is also available here and step by step what aws services are required to create this three tier architecture with screenshots and a wonderful diagram so using this diagram you can understand how the request flows from client to route 53 to aws cdn and from there request will go as i explained you to the elastic load balancer from there it would go to ec2 instances of front end to back end to database now you might be wondering why there are two vpcs here right basically here in this diagram ankit is also showing about the disaster recovery strategy where you will create vpcs in different region so this is region 1 and this is region 2 and using both of these regions what you can do even if something goes entirely wrong in one region you still have the other region as your backup so you can follow this blog as is it will take 3 to 4 hours very easily and follow each and every screenshot and you can deploy your three tier application but before doing that you have to watch my videos and create one tier application and two tier application only then the three tier application will be easy to understand for you if not looking at so many components you will get scared but it is very easy if you have deployed one tier and two tier applications now going back to the discussion initially i told you 
when you have to mention about this three tier application project and when you should not have or when you should not mention about this three tier application model that you are seeing here one doubt that you should get is abhishek these days everything is serverless or these days people are moving towards the kubernetes architecture but here we are talking about ec2 instances we are talking about scaling multiple ec2 instances so that is the problem now most of the organizations are shifting from this architecture model to the kubernetes architecture model now nobody is or many few or very less organizations are deploying their applications onto the ec2 instances everybody is moving towards containers or the serverless approach right so in such cases you will not have this complicated architecture that you are seeing here of course the complexity of kubernetes is different and it is complex in its own way you might have watched my eks video and you might have understood that but this architecture explain only when the organization is looking for experience hosting the applications on the ec2 instance or you can say that i have hosted the three tier architecture model on the ec2 instance in my previous organization if you talk about containers and if you talk about this architecture model then your interviewer will not be convinced and he will assume that you have not worked on aws in real time okay so if the job description requires knowledge on containers explain the eks architecture model if the job description requires knowledge of applications on ec2 instance then you can explain this three tier architecture model i'll explain this entire three tier architecture using the demonstration in one of the webinars or you know i have to take a dedicated 2 to 3 hours uh, on a weekend to explain about this because it does not qualify for a youtube video it is too much to explain in one single video because there are so many components and it also includes some pricing so i'll explain you that when we do a webinar but try to follow this entire document if you have any questions let me know in the comment section and i am more than happy to help you so share the feedback of this 30 days entire course how did you find it what is your feedback i am more than happy to listen about it in future wait for my future uh, series future playlist it is going to be very very exciting thank you so much see you all in the next video take care